so I'm gonna open up this video just coming out and saying it right off the bat this format is being done almost as a tribute to um, John Bain or how many people may have known him as Total Biscuit who passed away a week after my birthday back in 2018 I I got this game on sale I'm not being paid to promote this but I feel this is one of those games that he probably would have loved to at least gotten a look at and maybe have done a WTF is so this is going to be my let's hope good tribute to John Bain the Total Biscuit hello ladies and gentlemen my name is Anglos of EM and today we're going to be taking a quick look at this new early access game out of uh, Hong Kong, a developed and published by Duyai Interactive Entertainment. I probably butchered that horribly, so I apologize to the developers. Uh, Gunfire Reborn. This game is, to put it to put it simply, a Borderlands roguelite with up to four player uh, co-op online. Uh, the difficulty will scale to the players, as well as there is, after completing the game once, an additional difficulty setting that will be unlocked. The game is currently playable on Steam for $11.99 uh, US dollars, and we're going to take a quick look through the main menu, see what's available. Bear in mind, this isn't early access, so things are subject, subject to change further down the line. Let's begin. So, WTF is Gunfire Reborn. Gunfire Reborn, as I said, is a Borderlands-esque roguelite, and what I mean by that is the weapon system is very similar to Borderlands in that many of the weapons are have random aspects and traits that will roll on them uh, in a variety of different ways, ranging from damage type to abilities that they might have. Uh, but we're going to jump into things with the settings menu. Pretty basic settings, standard, nothing too crazy, um, nothing crazy, nothing outlandish. You can remap all your key bindings. Uh, video settings are not bare bones, uh, as some other games might be, but they are, they're not limiting. They're what they need to be. There's nothing, there's not too many, there's not too little. For how simple, and that's not a... That's not to detract from the art style of the game, as I do think this game is beautiful. Um, so much so that I really personally don't care that my settings are set to medium and low. Can I run it higher? Yes. Do I care? Not particularly. That said, FOV. Uh, this game does have a pretty wide range of FOV, going all the way down to 70. Not that you, not that I can imagine anyone would want to do that, all the way up to 130. I play a lot of Destiny 2, and so that the max FOV of that is 105, is, which is why it's set to as such. Vertical Sync, I turn that off. Many other people turn that off. It's off by default, thankfully. There's a frame rate uh, limiter. You can have it from 30, 60, I believe 90, nope, 72, and 144, or unlimited. Um, the game runs wonderfully uh i'm sure this thing i'm sure this game is perfectly capable of running on most hardware even laptops that are, are a good couple years old <clears throat> i would hope so because for the aspect ratios there's the option to go down to four by three aspect ratio all the way up to 32 by nine which is ridiculous Audio settings. Basic audio mixing, there's voice volume, sound effect, environment. There's also uh, voice chat that you can edit. I will say, uh, the game does, as far as I'm aware, I can't remember if I changed this or not, set you into voice chat automatically. By default, you can turn that off. You can also set to push to talk or always talk or auto mute. There is controller support, it is partial controller support. I don't want to play an FPS with a controller, though I understand many people might. Uh, and as far as I'm aware, 
the controller support is... I don't know what the partial controller support might be. I think... I can't remember if there were instances where I had to type things. Uh, however, that is not something that I have personally looked into, unfortunately. Moving on. The game itself has a very long checklist of monsters and upgrades that you can acquire. There are four different rarities that you can acquire, being normal, rare, legendary, and cursed. The cursed ones are debuffs, and these ideally you don't want to have outside of very unique circumstances. There is a fairly broad variety of weapons. It's like, but in that sense, there's a lot of pistols, there's a lot of SMG, there are subcategories, but every gun, as far as I can tell, is unique in some aspect or another. For instance, these are all assault rifles. These are all rifles of some persuasion. This one, as an example, if you right-click the alternate fire mode for, for this weapon is it'll throw a small orb out in the area and you and your teammates can shoot through that and it, and they'll get a damage buff. This one has a high critical uh, multiplier uh, whenever you hit three critical shots in a row. <clears throat> so there are rifles, SMGs, pistols, shotguns, snipers, rocket launchers, and what the game calls injectors, which these three are all essentially lasers. This one is quite literally a little Mushu dragon that wraps around your wrist and belches fire like a flamethrower. There are multiple heroes in the game. This is most likely going to be expanded as the game is developed, as again, it is in early access. We have Albai, who is a run-and-gun dual wielder with a standard explosive grenade. Kiyan, a bird with heavy melee capacities. And the Crown Prince, of which has met, has a lot of CC and a lot of area denial uh, in his kit. Uh, this is the last thing we're going to look at in the menu before we jump in. The talent tree. These, the expedition survival and battle tree, will all carry over from character to character. The only thing that changes if you ch were to change character is the actual hero tree, which isn't much of a tree, more of a column that you're building through. These are generally fairly powerful buffs, and as is, as a, and as such are more expensive. However, they are directly tied behind. They are directly locked behind uh, progression. We're going to start a new adventure. The game, like I said, does have four-player online co-op that you can match make into. There are at the moment, as far as I'm aware, two difficulties uh, that you can acquire in the game. Normal being what you would start out with. And you unlock the elite difficulty after completing the game at least once. You don't, you don't need to do it on multiple characters. You just need to do it on one. We're going to do it on normal for now. As I would more like to just showcase what the game offers. Now... What I'm hoping to accomplish is we're just going to complete the first stage, we're going to run through. There's not much here that I like. I'll take this. We're going to run through the first stage, uh, get to the boss, hopefully kill the boss, and then we're going to essentially commit seppuku and move on. And there, the reason we're going to just end the run after we beat the bosses, there's... So I can show you all the progression system from level to level. Uh, the game does not have an ABS function outside of very specific firearms. Um, and However, the gunplay itself is generally pretty crisp. However, I'm not doing a very good job of showcasing that crispness. There are a number of enemies as I briefly ran through in the come on there we go as I briefly ran through what I was showcasing the menu and 
many enemies have different, not not whole methods of dealing with them, but different ways to optimally take them. Out. One good example of that would be. We're gonna do that. One good example of that happens to be the overshield that they might have. So, for instance, you've been seeing enemies with a blue health bar, yes? So, a good way to take care of those is with a sharp shock elemented weapon. However, this weapon, which I unlocked actually very recently, this bow here, is quite powerful. And as such, costs uh, your special ammo, which is more rare than the other ammo types. As you can see, it is very powerful. <laughs> there are no hit there are no hit scan weapons in the game. All weapons, their projectiles do have travel time, even this one, even though it does fire very quickly, it is not in fact hit scan. One thing I did I didn't explicitly bring up, the abilities. So the abilities in the game come in two flavors, at least for Albi, the dog, and the Crown Prince being the cat. The secondary ability is which is listed uh, in the bottom right corner next to my weapons, uh, has charges. And those charges we're gonna take that. And those charges can be refilled by defeating enemies and enemies actually dropping the resource in order to refill it. Die immediately. That's impressive. Come on. Okay. As for the other ability, which you've seen me do a couple of times, that right there is this character's active ability. And every character has an active ability. Well, they're both active, but a primary and a secondary ability. And when I said earlier that the cat is more centered around part, around CC and area denial. What I mean by that is the area denial the slowing grenade and the CC being the energy ball that you throw out and locks an enemy in place. This, that little purple crack in the wall, is what's called a vault. You can shoot it to open it and enter and inside is usually a short challenge. Uh, some of them platforming some of them just trap avoidance. And others would be combat encounters. They're not terribly difficult, for the most part. And most of them, at least the ones that are not combat focused, have a secondary chest that you can acquire. downside to that one. Okay. Some enemies will drop AoE pools, such as what is here. This man, this gentleman, this fine bastard, this could become your best friend. Craftsman. For every time you encounter him, you can upgrade your weapons a total of two times. As in, you can either upgrade both weapons once, or one weapon twice. There we go. spawn additional vaults in one level. I'm hoping 
this one is a combat one, so we can showcase what one of those might look like. Okay. <laughs> so, at the end of each level, there's this blue chest that opens up. You can acquire an upgrade. There's not much... None of these are exactly the ones I would want, but we're going to take this one just because it seems like the best of the three. So this isn't exactly the combat room I was hoping for. I was more hoping to get a boss room, but that's perfectly fine. There we go. dead, chest is opened. The game, at the moment, it seems somewhat slow paced. It does pick up in intensity very heavily as you move from area to area. Um, different enemies have different abilities, different attack patterns, and different environments obviously can pose a unique threat. So we have another vault, we're going to break this open, go ahead and run on through. And this challenge, I've had to do a couple of times, when enemies die, they'll turn into these little beetle things that crawl across the ground, and they can be dealt with fairly easily. Look at that, my, my poison smoke was able to take care of all of them, I barely had the fire issue. Up. There we go. Amazing. The game is just throwing these at us right now. I'm surprised we have. Oh, nope. Still not a boss room. Okay. Okay, there we go. Uh, so, you've been seeing me kind of swap weapons back and forth. And for the weapons that are available, you have the Foundry, which is this revolver looking thing. That I currently have equipped, or your two primary weapons. The foundry, the revolver, will never run out of ammo. However, if you aren't careful, your your primary and secondary weapon can. And so, you need to be mindful of how much ammo you are using occasionally. Right now, it's not going to become a problem, presumably, but later in the game, if you're not paying attention, you might run out of a very important ammo type, and as such, be up shit's creek without a paddle, as it were. There we go. Does this pierce? No, it doesn't. Some weapons are able to pierce through physical shields. And it's always fun to do that. coming up on the boss. So we're going to swap this out as the boss does have a shield. And our lightning damage is effective against shields. We're going to take this one. Deal with adds. Here we come. Whoa. So this is the boss stage. At the beginning of every boss stage, before you actually go into the arena, there is this little prep room. And you can, in here, speak to this fine gentleman which I'm not going to buy this as the weapon I'm going to be using for my DPS doesn't truly reload. And we're going 
to hopefully beat the boss. This is the first boss. He has a big old fist. Very, very uh, reminiscent, as it were, to Knuckle Dragger from Borderlands 2. Top your dodges when you're fighting a boss. Ow. For instance, I dodged far too early for that. And I'm kind of. Dying. That's okay. I can show you this. You have one revive per run. And once you've used your revive, uh, you are basically shit out of luck if you die again. However, if you do use the revive, you do use a large portion, I believe 50% of the resources you've accumulated up to that point. Ross should die momentarily. Oh, oh. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate, but that is okay. I was going to end the run anyways after we fought the boss, so this is fine. At the end of each run, you will have your accumulated soul essence. Doing, And this is the currency that would be spent if you were to pass, die during a run and revive. I don't have enough to buy anything. Unfortunate, that's not too big of a deal. Either way... This has been Gunfire Reborn. Uh, like I said, this game is available for early access on Steam for $11.99 US dollars. The developer and publisher are not paying me to do this. I'm simply doing this out of my own good grace. I've spent about 15 hours on the game so far, and I have thoroughly enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing it develop uh, even further as time goes on. Thank you. My name is Ben Anglos VM, and I hope uh, this video has been able to do justice to the format that is WTF is that from my knowledge was originated by the late and uh, very loved John Bain total biscuit I hope Jenna and their son um, and the rest of their family are staying as safe as they can be and getting by as best they can I wish them the best and I thank all, anyone who watches this very, very much for taking the time to do so. Have a wonderful day.